Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this third clip in a series, we describe the very most common root cause mechanics for baggy webs. However, I do this with the admonishment not to jump to conclusions. A very big risk in the best of times. The most common cause of bagginess is variations across the width of basis weight, caliper, gauge, or whatever you call thickness. The web is usually made flat. However, the relatively higher thick lanes build up and stack up in the wound roll into higher pressure, larger circumference ridges. So, if winding a web with gauge bands is the most common cause, how big of a bulge is too much? Well, the answer is complicated by a couple of factors. The first is the yield point of the material, which may vary from less than 1% on some stiff materials to more than 10% on some rubbery materials. The second complication is that winding is a leveling process. It tends to beat down the high spots and fluff up the low spots. Thus, the wound roll diameter bulge will be smaller or much smaller than the gauge error that created it. So again, how much of a roll diametral bulge and or gauge variation is too much? So let us start with the diameter bulge and then proceed to the gauge bands. The first example calculation shows a prediction I made some time ago for paper. That is, a bulge that is only 20 thousandths of an inch on a 40 inch diameter roll, or 500 microns on a 1 meter diameter roll, might begin to damage the paper. Cecilia Land published a marvelous PhD thesis on this topic and verified those numbers are approximately correct. The worst case, however, that I ever saw was with a laminate that had a dead soft aluminum foil layer. Here, a diameter variation of a mere ten thousandths of an inch, or 250 microns, on a smaller roll was enough to destroy the web with bagginess. So back to the harder question about gauge variation. Here, I will only give you a rough idea based on the fact that gauge variation is perhaps 10 times as big as the resulting diameter variation and based on extensive field experience with a wide range of materials and wound rolls. That is, at 1% gauge variation you will have few problems. However, at 10% gauge variation you will have few customers. Numbers like this should be quite frightening to machine builders, web makers, QA, and manufacturers of scanners and gauging systems. Still, that is what the situation appears to be and probably the main reason for the epidemic of bagginess everywhere. Measuring and controlling variation this small is exceedingly difficult. At least part of the problem, that of detecting tiny gauge variation, is partially solved. That is, to use thousands of layers for a measurement instead of the one layer thickness that is used in the test lab or the scanner. That is, to use roll hardness instead of the test lab or scanner. I reported on this groundbreaking work by Amy Tour of Avery Dennison in many venues, including my Web 101 training and a previous Web 201 clip. I will merely summarize here. The winder determines the average tightness, and that is represented by the average hardness across the roll and is the x-axis on this plot. The gauge variation determines the variation of hardness across the roll, and the maximum delta is given on the y-axis of this plot. These two factors, winder tightness and gauge variation, together determine the probability of the roll running without trouble. 
The root cause of most bagginess is winding a web that has a variation of thickness across the profile. In other words, winding a web with poor gauge profile. As we just saw, the size of the gauge variation is very likely frighteningly small. So small that we might not be able to measure it with convenient gauging systems or even test labs. That we can't easily measure variation that small does not change the root cause. That we can't easily control the variation that small does not change the root cause. Wishful thinking simply has no place in problem solving. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned where we will begin a series of clips showing successful troubleshooting of baggy web causes. That is, what tools and techniques did we use to literally pinpoint that component that was not good enough, that was causing tiny caliper variations that eventually destroyed the product with bagginess.